Hey, how's it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eater, and in this video, we're going to talk about bacterial infections in shrimp. This video was requested by one of our subscribers in our last video down in the comments section. We do these videos to help you guys out, so if you ever need any help or have any questions with shrimp, let us know in the comments section and we'll get back to you as soon as possible and even crank out a video just for you. And in this case, we didn't have anything talking about bacterial infections, so we're making one from scratch. Even though we had plans to do the stocking tank of the simple Caradina shrimp setup, this is more important and it could be a serious case where someone's having an issue with it right now and these tips are definitely gonna help you get your shrimp back on track. So to start off with bacterial infections, they usually only affect a few shrimp at a time. Even in large colonies, you'll only have one or two shrimp die off every day or so, sometimes a few days in between. Now you'll check parameters, everything will be on point. This is strictly something to be sick with the shrimp. Sometimes you can't tell, but sometimes you'll be able to see like a white or milky uh, color in the shrimp. This is the tissue, or the term for it is muscular necrosis. This is where the shrimp is basically dying from the inside out, and in most cases, it is a death sentence. I haven't ever really seen a shrimp come back from that, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna remove that shrimp ASAP, because when it dies, that shrimp is just going to be food for other shrimp who will then get affected because they ate the infected tissue. Now, if you have a dead body already in the tank, of course, remove that as fast as possible. This is going to be the number one way to stay on top of your bacterial infection. Also, if you kind of think that your shrimp might be a little milky or you're not really too, too sure, I chose this tank for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is because I have my ghost bees in here and if I were to do my little trick where I turn on the black light for the tank, they would be glowing bright white. And because there's no real uh, like glow light sticking out in the tank, I don't have any issues. Usually I like to do these kind of videos when I see something or I, I can show you guys a pic of what exactly I'm talking about. However, I don't have any issues with bacterial infections right now, but I had to get the video out. So turn on the black light. If you've got any glowing shrimp, that's probably muscular necrosis. Remove that shrimp or you could even quarantine it in a little jar to see how it does for a few days. All right, so if you have a bacterial infection, do not get too discouraged. Even the best shrimp keepers get these. You can get them from multiple different situations, from poor immune systems with imports. You've got poor immune systems from improper nutrition. Uh, the tank could be too hot. Water parameters could be off. You could have stress with the shrimp. There could be oils on your hands, copper in the tank, or the most common cause is disrupting the substrate. The main reason why I'm using this tank as an example for this video is because the Gloso in the bottom right foreground plant, I would love to take that and use it for our 48 gallon rimless tank by the front door. We are going to escape that with CO2 the works and the Gloso is exactly what I want to use in that tank. However, the shrimp in this tank are really good breeders for us. I do not want to get them sick. So we are going to move all of the shrimp in the tank before we even touch those substrate planted stem plants and rooted foreground plants, the crypts, everything. You pull that up for whatever reason, the debris built up over the years from the food and mulm gets down in there and gets into the water column when you root, unroot the plants. And for whatever reason, these shrimp just get sick almost every single time. So many people come to me, I've got dead shrimp, only every few days, yada yada yada, and I ask them if they touch the substrate or move around any plants, and a lot of the times the answer is, yeah, I just rescaped. If you're gonna rescape, I highly suggest setting up a new tank for the shrimp, then rescaping, let it cycle again, then re-add the shrimp. Ways to prevent a bacterial infection 
would be proper nutrition. I highly recommend a large variety of shrimp foods. This is gonna ensure that your shrimp are getting the right amount of minerals and vitamins throughout a wide spectrum of different foods. Also, you're gonna to wanna to keep your temperatures low. That's why I recommend not keeping a heater in any of your tanks. Just like a hospital, you're gonna to wanna to keep your tanks as cold as possible to prevent any disease from spreading. At the same time, you want a proper temperature to promote breeding. So around 70, 72, I think is ideal temperature to keep and breed your shrimp. Uh, we had a hurricane a few years back where our power went out for 21 hours and the only thing that was really wrong because we had a generator to keep all the air pumps running and stuff like that however it wasn't strong enough to run our ac and temperatures in the house got to 86 degrees and some of the tanks were in the low 80s as well and because of this we did have some bacterial infections come up in our aurora tigers and red tigers as well as our stardust so the wild type caridinas seem to be more prone to these bacterial infections and for that reason we keep our temperatures at 72. Just in case it happens, some of the things that you can do to help with it is of course remove those infected bodies right away, remove any dead bodies immediately, get them out of there, increase water changes. If you're doing water changes already every week, you know, 10 or 20%, go ahead and do 20% every three days or so. This is gonna help make sure that the water parameters are pristine. Another thing you can do is add botanicals, Indian almond leaves, alder cones, uh, just about anything, all the pods and stuff that are natural and break down in the tank. Those are gonna release those humic acids and those are great for helping maintain pH and also have are packed with nutrients and stuff that are going to help boost the immune system to the shrimp as well. Um, I recommend my, my method and recipe is one Indian almond leaf per 10 gallons plus one. So if you've got a 30 gallon tank like the one here in front, I'd put three Indian almond leaves for the 10 gallons each and then I'd add an extra leaf into the mix just to ensure that there's uh, enough humic acid being released off of those leaves. And then next, if you don't have the botanicals, I use this black water, and I'll get a better picture for that, um, black water extract from Brightwell. It has all the provided nutrients that the botanicals would leave without making your water turn like a black water tank. Uh, the next thing is the Vitamarin F from Brightwell as well. It's a multivitamin supplement. It's a full spectrum vitamin. So anything that the botanicals aren't throwing in, this is going to help just boost your shrimp's immune system and make sure they're getting everything that they possibly could. It's like one of those uh, E-packs e that you get when you're sick. Z-pack, I'm sorry. Um, I've never taken one of those, but my buddy always tells me every time he sees me get a cold, but I like to get over it with my own immune system if possible. However, if you already have a bacterial shrimp infection, you're going to have to dose the tank if you want to save the rest of your shrimp. Now, like I said, it, it's something that can happen to the best shrimpers. It, it's something that can come out of nowhere. and in some cases there is no exact recipe for getting rid of it it could be a total lost cause and if that happens you don't necessarily have to tear down the tank but i would highly recommend letting the tank run for a good month and recycle the tank maybe dose the entire tank with a heavy uh, coat of hydrogen peroxide and you know let it run for another 30 days before I would throw in more shrimp in. and I would start with a very low number before I dove in and started keeping shrimp in that tank again. It's just one of those things where it happens to the best of us and you want to avoid it as much as possible but if you do get it don't get too discouraged. It's not something that happens very often as long as you you know keep the tank cool, don't touch the substrate, don't add in uh, anything new to the tank, it shouldn't be any issue for you guys. So as always, thanks for watching. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments section if there's anything else you'd like, like me to cover.